right, get set. Here comes the count. For five days, three students from the Indiana University of Pennsylvania packed their bags for New York, Philadelphia, and Washington, D.C. in search of guidance, direction, and even reassurance. From successful graduates of IUP who have walked in their shoes, this is their story. I just really fell in love with IUP with the campus. I'm just so happy that I came to IP. It was probably one of the best decisions I've made so far, I think. I'm a Spanish education major, and um, like I'm just can say that I truly love my major and that I love Spanish. I love teaching Spanish. And it's just IP's really helped you know me to see that part of me. I guess that I. I never would thought I'd be interested in Spanish or teaching. I can't picture myself with one job my whole life. I feel like I'm going to change careers several times. I don't want to be in a place where I just hate going to work every day. What stuff the thing that fears me the most that I'm going to be in a job where I'm like, this isn't what what I thought was going to make me happy. I didn't. I'm just really happy where I am and where the future is going to lead from here. Well, I knew I, I wanted to come to IUP because it had a great criminology program and I always wanted to do a career in law enforcement. In high school I wasn't ever planning on going to college because I never took school seriously until um, until I started working as a dishwasher and I realized I didn't want to wash dishes for the rest of my life, so I said, school's probably a good idea. And now I'm planning on a career in law as a prosecuting attorney so that I can stick with my law enforcement but do something more intellectually challenging and more fulfilling, I think. Uh, I read an article uh, regarding college graduates with bachelor's degrees who are stocking shelves at Lowe's. And college students with master's degrees or their managers and I, I kind of see a lot of people are afraid of that that kind of situation where they have they feel overqualified and I hope that the job outlook gets better because that's one thing that we're not going to be able to control as you know we can go to school and be the best student but that doesn't mean that people are still going to hire you so that's one of my concerns. First generation college student, so when I graduated from high school, my only goal was just to make sure I go to college. I was actually looking into going to a school in New York, uh, then my cousin actually told me to check out IUP. She said the academics was just as good as a private college but for cheaper. I don't want to stay in one particular job the rest of my life. Um, so wherever the path leads me, that's where I'm going to go. I just hope to, even if I have to start at the bottom and work my way up, it's just the way that the economy is. Even getting a job in fashion magazines may be difficult, but hopefully I'll have a good end and I'm not going to put any limits on what I decide to do. Very cold, but we're having a good time. Right. Much more. It's 20, 28 degrees. Yeah, that was 28 was the high. Like 15 was the low. This place is 
buzzing, it's happening, people are going crazy and shopping and sightseeing and it's pretty fun and we're having a good time. The city that never sleeps. snowstorm last night so we got about two or three inches today so might be a little bit of adventure trying to drive out in the snow this morning. Yeah we're headed to Fifth Avenue in New York City to interview with Leland. This is our first interview so we're excited. I want to truck it through the snow to make it so we're happy. New York City here we come. Yeah. Uh, if you did you know uh, all the things that you could do there, maximize your opportunity. You could do anything you wanted to do. When you were IP, IEP, what were some memorable moments? Um, like, What were you like at our age? What was your favorite things about IEP? Oh, I mean, IEP uh, was uh, one of the greatest times of my life, the, the years I spent up there. I actually spent five years at IEP instead of four because I ended up uh, you know, taking so many different elective classes. But at IUP, I enjoyed uh, every minute of it. You know, the, the, you know, the, the kind of student I was was a diametrically opposed to the kind of student I was in high school. I uh, went to Central High School of Philadelphia, which was uh, the top academic high school in the country, actually, public school. And uh, many of my colleagues, you know, schoolmates and whatnot, went on to be like valedictorians from Harvard and stuff like that. However, uh, I was not among that number in high school. <laughs> I was uh, played around quite a bit, but I had a couple of areas in which I distinguished myself. One of those was in foreign languages. Is there a piece of knowledge that knowledge that you have for us uh, since we're approaching graduation, and something that we can take back to students at IUP for their career path? Just something that we'll be able to hold with us as we go through our area of study? Uh, I would say, uh, without question, uh, you know, uh, work so hard at IUP uh, academically uh, because um, that then creates greater opportunity for you if you should decide to go to grad school, even if it's at IUP. But take, I mean, just, you know, suck up all the knowledge that you possibly can while there. Um, with success, I think, comes risks. And what was one of your biggest risks that you faced during um, your career? Uh, I would say boxing uh, while, you know, uh, working in real jobs. Because, uh, you know, you, you kind of looked at it as an idiot, a fool, somebody who would risk getting their head knocked off, suffering brain damage, or whatever, you know, at risk of a career. Uh, but again, you know, you got to you know, do what you love doing. So I know that you said in high school you didn't, uh, you weren't focused and you weren't sure what you wanted to do. Uh, with you coming to IUP, did you find a focus and did you figure out what you wanted to do by attending IUP? Well, I, I could have done everything I wanted. I could have gone straight to, you know, Harvard, Yale or wherever I wanted to go out of high school had I applied myself like my friends did and I didn't. So when I got to IUP, that was essentially my second chance. So. All I wanted to do was to, uh, you know, really uh, pursue every opportunity that existed, and that's why, uh, like I say, I took so many different classes. I mean, I studied Chinese at IUP, Japanese, French, um, you know, crazy classes like him knows. I got reprimanded for doing that, for shooting, <laughs> shooting too much pool in Elkin Hall's uh, lounge. You know. But I mean, st things like that, you know, and then, uh, you know, I got, of course, got involved in boxing when I was at IUP, uh, and, uh, you know, went on to become a professional and so on. So, so many different uh, things that uh, uh, I exposed myself to and that the IEP environment afforded me. So, was there a time that you wanted to try something new and a person told you that that would not work? And if it was, how did you go about that and still being successful in that area? All, always. <laughs> you hear that all the time. Yeah. I mean, my best friend now, uh, you know, uh, uh, Kevin Hall, who was at IEP with me, he went to Central also. You know, he's begging me not to come back in boxing, you know, because of the breasts, you know, uh, and so on, which is understandable, you know. Uh, but you got to make it happen, you know, if that's that what you believe in, you know. So. I think it's just your attitude, you know. If it, you know, things will work or they won't work. Uh, you put your, you know, level best effort into it, 
And if it does, you know, that's fab. But if it doesn't, you try and try again. You know, try, try, you know, until you succeed. I mean, that's, that's what uh, – so if you have that mindset going in, then I think, uh, you know, you can roll with the punches. What's a quote or word of wisdom that really inspires you? I noticed on your desk you had, um, you had a quote, and I was wondering if that's something that you – inspires you or if you have any words of wisdom that really helped motivate you to where you are today. Um, I would just say that, uh, <clears throat> you know, uh, be all that you can be. I mean, that's obviously a, you know, kind of a hackneyed phrase <laughs> but, but, uh, and hardly original. But, uh, you know, be all that you can be uh, It would be one, you know. And then, uh, you know, uh, what you want uh, uh, someone to write is their epitaph on, you know, on your tombstone. Uh, it's kind of a, a funny saying. It says, what did you do with your dash? Uh, and what that means is, you know, mm -hmm. on your tombstone, you'll see, you know, 1961 dash, and then whatever year you happen to expire. What did you do with your dash? What filled that space of time? Well, we just got done interviewing Leland, and it was really an honor getting to meet him, and um, definitely enjoyed the interview. I think we all did. And what I think I can really take from this is since I'm going to be a Spanish teacher in the future, it's showing how learning other languages and knowing other languages can really help in your career and telling my students that someone can be as successful as Leland got to where he was because of his knowledge of Spanish and Chinese and other languages. And I'm really happy and that's really what I got to take a lot from the interview. how many years have passed since it's happened and it's sad that you tend to forget you know because it's not you're not reminded daily and being here you kind of realize what used to be here and when, when seeing it on TV as a child you don't really realize what's happening to your country but now seeing all these memorials all the firefighters that died standing across from the fire department and seeing those memorials of the uh, firefighters that we no longer have, it's, it's really surreal. So yeah, Leland's interview went pretty well, I think. Um, I think we did a good job. Yeah, I think it was a really good first interview, because yeah. we didn't really know what to expect, but I think it went really well. I think it was good on both ends. Yeah. That interview got me excited for the rest of them. Yeah. Because I feel like we yeah, learned more. a lot of valuable mm -hmm. information. Yeah. It's got me excited for the rest of them. Excited, yeah. With day three? Yep, yeah, day, day three, three. Yeah. It's coming through. It's going yeah. fast. <laughs> And what about your personality makes you uh, want to teach and want to be a good teacher? I love all my children. Whether I get along with all of them, it doesn't matter. I love all my children. My goal is to get them, is to work as hard as I can to help them succeed. When you came to IUP, did you see yourself as a teacher or what, what did you want to do? Um, I saw it as a psychiatrist for a while. I didn't know how to get there or what to do to be there. I just knew that it sounded kind of cool. I could be a doctor. But I really didn't have an understanding of what to do. I had a lot of things that I liked, but I didn't know if I had one thing that I was really ready to like, really focus my life on, because it, it, was, it was 18. To, see, uh, to, to figure out at 18 what I was going to do when I was 60, I mean, that's, that was tough to do. So it took, it, for me, it took two years. And then after two years, then I was like, you know what? This is something I enjoy, I like working with kids. I'm not an office person, so I think taking a lot of classes I took and meeting a lot of professors that I met, it really helped to, you know what, now I know. This is something I want to do. 
is that advice you'd give to IEP students, like you've said, since you start off in a different major and change um, in the middle of your college career? Is, what kind of, is that something you would say as well to um, college students at IEP? I give them, the advice I would give is, is do it. Is first, before, don't just make an impulse, because sometimes impulses turn out to be good, some, but sometimes. And then you have to be willing to go for it. You cannot be afraid. Because you know what, yeah, I'm, I, you may not like it. You may hate your major now or, or think it's okay, but think you want to do something else. And you may change your major and you may find out, you know, I don't like this either. And that's okay. I mean, you have time. You know, work is gonna be there when you're done. Make sure you find something that you're passionate about doing. And if you're three years in, it doesn't matter. If you know that what you're doing now, you cannot see yourself 20 years from now doing, don't keep doing it because you'll end up stopping or you're hating it for, for as long as you have to do it. Change your major, find out what you like, talk to professors, talk to other students, and figure out what you enjoy doing. If you can get paid and enjoy and find a major in something you enjoy doing, go for it. Uh, when you were making your transition into becoming an education major, did you always know that you wanted to be an urban, uh, urban teacher? Never. That's, I think it's the easy way for me to answer that. I never. I didn't leave IUP thinking I'm doing urban. I grew up in rural. Right. A student taught in rural, all the schools around me. Rural. That's my comfort, that was my comfort zone. That's anything I ever wanted. And I looked around, I'm like, can I really do this every day? Can I really get up, get on the subway, and deal with kids who, who I thought for a long time were very different than what I was used to. But at the end of the day, it's, there's no difference. People shy away from urban, I think because we, we watch too much and we read too much. But kids are kids. It doesn't matter what color you are, what they are. When you get past, everyone's got problems. And once you can get past that with a kid, what their problem is, and get to the kid itself, kids are kids. There's no difference between the urban kid and the rural kid besides what they face. When you talk to your family and friends about the school that you uh, would be teaching at, did any of them try and turn you away from doing this or tell you that it's something better that you could be doing? I went home, I never forget, Colin, I joked when I was at home. I was like, I'll interview, I'm gonna work in Harlem. It was a joke to my family. And they were like, my mom was like, oh no, you better not. And then I got the job and I called home and I was like, mom, so I'm teaching in Harlem. No, you're not, where are you teaching? Now I'm teaching in Harlem. What? No. <laughs> like they were just, they had seen too much on TV, they had heard too much that they think, I guess when you don't expose yourself to something like this, they all thought, as soon as I stepped out in a city, my wallet would be gone and somebody was beating me up. My dad, my dad was very understanding. My dad was kind of, kind of like, Harlem, first he was taken back, because that name, Harlem has such a name. Sometimes there's some great things here, unfortunately, too many of the bad things. I'm gonna play the part of the devil's advocate and ask, uh, why do you care for your students the way you do? To say, why do I care is because there, I see myself in them a lot of times. It's, I guess that's kind of cliche, that you see yourself in the kids, but they're still like, they're, they're so moldable. There's, you have such a short window to do it, but you can change them. Not change them, but you can guide them. And I think that's why I care, because my goal is to not only have these kids succeed in their own lives, but if they can succeed in their own life, their children will have a different life. And not only will their children have a different life, their parents will have a different life. So they can not only change themselves, they can change their family. I said before, these kids come from, from a rough place. Some of them don't have a great home life. Um, I have kids who live in shelters. This, for a lot of them, is the most stable thing that they have. So I have to maintain that. I can't allow this to get as crazy as some of the things that go on outside. This has to be home. So some of these kids, you'll see kids in here at 6.30. They don't wanna be in your class, fourth period, but they're here, they live here, and this is where they wanna be. And so that's one thing, you have to develop that level of, of comfort, but you also have to make sure that you, there's that level, like I'm not your best friend, I'm not your buddy on the corner. I'm your teacher, but I'm still here to listen. Um, was, is it a time that you set to say that you're successful, or is it, are you at the point now where you feel as though you're, you're, uh, you have fulfilled yourself? It's hard to say. It's hard to put um, a date. 
like some sort of concrete. I'm gonna have this done by this date. Or I'm gonna have. It's hard to do because everything is everything is so different. As much I guess as as great as it would feel to get to have a student come and say, you know what, you really helped me, and to validate. To me, what I do every day validates my career. My my decision to take that. Would that be amazing if they did? Yeah. But I can't, I can't do what I do with that on my mind. I can't be my end. I can't think that they're going to come back and say thank you. I don't need thank you. If they got a diploma, if they got a high school diploma for me, that's thank you. I know when we came in, we seen a lot of IUP things around the room. So speaking to your students on a daily basis, do you talk to them about college and that there is more that they can do after high school? I've told them from day one. I've told them since day one. Every one of you are intelligent enough and after meeting them to go to college. I do that because I don't know if anyone's ever told them that before. I don't know if anyone's ever said you're smart enough to go to college. Because a lot of kids here in the urban setting, college is, you kidding me? College. Um, I had never heard of this until I came here. There is a huge graduation ceremony for, ceremony for our eighth graders. It's sad to say, but a lot of the eighth graders, um, because I mean, this is a high need school. It's a, it's a place where you know language. They don't kids don't have a great vocabulary. For a lot of these kids, their eighth grade diploma is all they ever get. So eighth grade is they get class rings, they get a big yearbook, they have a huge ceremony at a, a college near it in the Bronx. This is, that to them is like, if I get the high school diploma, whatever, I mean, I can get to 16 or 17, I can just sign myself out. So I preach college just because I think it's something beyond what they think they have to do. It's, we want to take back to IUP students and for us when we graduate, something to live by, something to keep us motivated while um, on our career path. So could you share with us something that helps you to keep going and moving forward? Don't be afraid when somebody tells you you can't do something or you shouldn't do something. I think we all get caught up in, in what we should do or what we thought we should do. When you graduate from IUP, I was blessed with a lot, with a lot, of, with a lot of tools to really succeed. But it wasn't just succeed in the box I've been in the whole time. You have to be willing to step out. Don't be afraid. That's, that's the thing I would say. Don't be afraid to, to move a few hours away from mom and dad. Don't be afraid to do that. I've learned more being out here and learning something on my own about myself than I ever would have if I would have stayed. And I'm not, for some people when they stay, that's, that works for them. It's, it's, it's okay and that works for them, but, but don't be afraid. When someone says you shouldn't do it, find out why not. Don't take someone else's word for anything. Oh, you, you, can't, you can't get that job, why not? You can't, you shouldn't go here, that's too far. Why? I mean, don't, don't be afraid, that's, my, that's my, my overall advice for any IEP student that's graduating, is do not be afraid to take a step out. Well, we just finished our interview with Matthew Edmondson, and um, it went really well, and I'm really happy we got to meet him and talk with him today. Um, I really think he broke um, up a lot of the stereotypes of inner city schools and inner city students and really opened our eyes to what they are truly like and how it is a very satisfying career as a teacher in an inner city school. And um, I found him, his advice to be very inspiring, and I, hope, and I hope that I can be a teacher like him in the future. And I wish him luck. And, future years at um, Roberto Clemente. And now we're on our way to Philly and um, we have four more interviews to do so it's going to be next busy few days but I'm excited and we all are and we're ready to you know get through these next few so. Today we're going to see Bruce Graham um, at the Art and Theater in Philadelphia. 
I'm really excited. Um, he's playwright. He's done a lot of really cool stuff. Um, done some checks in, yeah. Anastasia, the movie. So he definitely has written a lot of plays and for TV shows. So I'm really excited mm -hmm. about meeting him. And yeah, me too. It's going to be uh, something completely different from what we've seen so far. Yeah, and we too. have two interviews today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We have Kim with uh, KYW, so that'll be interesting. Mm -hmm. So we have a full pack day today. Um, you said that when you were attending IUP, it was kind of the music department, the theater department was kind of developing. Do you think that you left any kind of mark or changed it in any way? Um, we started some traditions. We started the improv comedy thing. We, did, we started the dinner theater. Uh, we started producing original plays. So we did, in that respect, make a mark. Um, IUP, well back, this is 1975 and I'm a freshman, um, and IUP was a little smaller, um, the town was a little smaller, uh, and the department, I was in the theater department, was actually part of the English department, so we didn't even have a real department. Um, I went there because it was 300 miles from home, it was cheap, and the female to male ratio was 4 to 1, which in theater makes it 10 to 1, so I said, this is my kind of school. And uh, I wasn't there three weeks and had already gotten in a show uh, as an actor, which is what my training is, not a playwright. The thing about IUP that was great was that you had to do everything, you know. Um, we produced our own dinner theater in the old student union, and we're hanging lights one day and realized, oh, these aren't too secure, let's get wire hangers, you know, and, and double secure them. So we took all the coat rack hangers, and that's what we did. But that's how you do theater. No one's going to hand you a, you know, a perfect situation. Um, and so you got to ad lib, you got to be creative, and sometimes you got to steal things out of the coat room. When writing your plays or acting, do you find yourself using things that you learned at IUP? Oh yeah, well like I said, the whole, it was funny, for years uh, you, could, you could look at my work as my Western Pennsylvania plays and my Eastern Pennsylvania plays. Um, Moon Over the Brewery is, it, although it, in my mind it takes place in Pottsville, which is more east, but it's a very IUP small town feeling to it. Like I said, I never lived in a small town. You know, and for four years, I was in a small town. And it really taught me a lot about, first of all, finding a sandwich, but secondly, just a different atti attitude. Listen to my Philly accent here. Um, a different way of life. Um, Minor Demons is an IUP play. You know, that takes place in Pittsburgh. Um, early in the evening is a Rainbow Bar and Grill. Like I said, it's Patty's Bar. Moon Over the Brewery, you know, is a coal town play. Um, Dex and Julie sitting in a tree is IUP, you know, right? So in that respect, yeah, I, I just I can't shake it. A lot of times students uh, go to college not knowing what they want to do or they think they know what they want to do and it changes. Um, you said you always wanted to be a playwright. How did you know that's what you wanted to do? I, well, first of all, I'm 52 and I'm still not really sure what I want to do, so I don't feel, if you know what you want to do at your age, that's great. And there's nothing wrong if you don't know what you want to do. Um, you know, uh, I, just, I just knew I wanted to be in the entertainment industry. Um, don't rush into response. If you're not sure you're going to be happy with something, don't burden yourself with things. Go read Thoreau, all right? Uh, you know, you don't own a car. A car owns you. If you're not sure what you want to do, don't put a bunch of anchors around your neck. You know, keep as free and as light and as fast moving as you can. What kind of personal satisfaction do you get out of being a playwright? The first biggest thrill I got uh, when I was in high school uh, we had a really cool, we had no theater department. It was football. It really was a football powerhouse. And we had this dumpy little, you know, theater department, if you will. And we got a lecture room and started doing one act plays. And I wrote a one act and directed it, which is a mistake, but I did it anyway. And I remember standing in the back of the theater listening to the audience respond, going, that is so cool. Because usually I'm on stage as an actor hearing them respond. And now I was like manipulating them in the back. And it was a real kind of feeling of, if I wasn't a writer, I'd probably be like a serial killer or a <laughs> dictator or something, a sniper. So um, I get all this out, you know, through that. And I, and I do. I get a real ego boost out of knowing I'm in, you know, you look back at the end and you say, hey, I've entertained literally with movies and TV and theaters. I'm millions of people. Um, they don't know my name. That's fine with me. Uh, you know, as long as they get it right on the check, I'm fine. But, you know, you like to think you, you, you left and you did. I'm not going to find a cure for cancer or anything. Well, maybe next week, but um, I'm working on that in my basement. Um, so, you know, you feel like you've done something. What is one of the greatest risks that you've taken in your career? The greatest risk, I think, was quitting a full-time job. I had a, you know, I was tenured faculty and um, in, a, in a nice school district that liked me and supported my writing habit, you know, all they could. And they gave me a year off to go to grad school. I went to Villanova and uh, to, 
that was my excuse. I'm going to get my master's. Um, and I ended up just seeing if I could make a living as a writer. I never forget my, 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 uh, my father, you know, who was very blue collar, my friend, my relatives are all like, are you nuts? You know, walking away from a job where, you know, you, they can't fire you unless you like set the school on fire or something. Um, and I said, no, I, I got to try this. Do you have any parting words for IEP students that are getting ready to graduate? Well, don't worry that you don't know where you want to go if you're 19, 20, 22. Don't let that frighten you. Um, you have, you know, I always tell my students when writing a play, you have to know sort of where it ends up, you know, maybe you, I yeah, can it to, I'm going to California, I don't know if I'm going to San Diego, San Francisco, or LA. I have a direction. Most times you have some sort of direction, there's something that interests you, whether it's on the math and science end, medicine, law, theater, something realistic. Um, you have an interest. You know, try and find something that's going to play to that interest, and then be realistic that no one is ever handed, you know, unless you're, you know, Charlie in the Chocolate Factory and this is what you want to do the rest of your life, um, you know, you're never going to get the perfect situation, so you make the best of it. Jeffrey Katzenberg, guy who uh, co-owns DreamWorks, said something years ago that he says, uh, you knock on the front door. They don't let you in the front door, you go to the back door. They don't let you in the back door, you tap on the window. Then you go to the basement door and then you go back to the front door and eventually they're going to open a door or a window. You're going to get in, but you, got, you can't give up. Um, Bruce was really great. Uh, I really liked him a lot. He was down to earth. He was funny. He had a lot of great things to say. Um, I liked what he said about knocking on the window, knocking on the door. You know, eventually they'll let you in because that's kind of like you're not always going to have doors open for you. And uh, it's just really good to hear someone who's so He's so down to earth say that, and it's, he's grounded in reality, and, and, I, and I really like that about him. It's been helpful to hear that, because it, you know that you're not always going to make a million dollars with what you're doing. You're going to be doing what you love to do, and he's, and he's living proof of that, and it's great to hear from him, and you know, I, hope, I, I hope people can, can relate to that, and I, I know I certainly did. Fun. It's, I mean, I can't imagine what else I would be doing. So we would like you to tell us how you, how were you at our age when you arrived at IUP? Well, um, I, I went to uh, IUP. I lived, I was born and raised in Easton and I went to IUP because my uh, high school guidance counselor told me it was a great school for journalism. And uh, it was one of the only schools that actually had their own journalism department, which is one of the reasons why I really liked it there. And um, went out there and I lived in Whitmire Hall and it was all girls. And, and so I went into radio and I started working at uh, WIUPFM and uh, I became the jazz producer. There was a whole block of time between 7 and 10, Monday through Friday, and that was jazz programming. And I became the jazz program director. And, um, and I had, you know, four or five guys working uh, with me, and it was just a blast. I absolutely loved, loved, loved working at the radio station there. The, the, one of the best things about the journalism department at IUP is the, um, the internship program. You have to have an internship to graduate. And that is you know, and I don't know what the st statistics are now, but I think at that time it was like 90% of kids who get an internship, that becomes their first job. Well, I, I graduated, two weeks before I graduated, I got a phone call from the radio station saying, hey, we have an opening as a, a, in the, as a, the, for the uh, sports person in the morning. Would you be interested? And I'm like, yeah, you know, I had $20 in my pocket. I was graduating, that was it. I had 20 bucks and it's like, absolutely. So I graduated and two weeks later I was working. What is it about your personality that got you interested in what you do? Well, 
I guess I'm just nosy. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, it's funny, the, uh, the, one of the things that we say in the newsroom is, we want to be the first to know, and we, we want to be the first to tell. Mm -hmm. we, you know, it's like we're great gossips. We, yeah. we, we talk about everybody. <laughs> and if you leave the room, chances are we will talk about you. So don't leave the room. That's one of the yeah, things. Exactly. But you know, people will also talk about you in front of your face, so it's OK. But um, I can remember when I was 17, and I'm sitting at the table, and my father is trying to convince me to be a business major. And I was like, oh, there's just no way I am going to be a business major. I just like gag. You know, I'm not yeah. doing that. You know, but. Um, I remember, he said, why do you want to do this? And I said, I want to know everything. I never doubted that this was the field that I wanted to go into. I just, I knew it when I, two years before I went to college. This is exactly what I wanted to do. Uh, you said that um, your dad was pushing you to be a, a business major, um, and you did what you wanted to do anyways. So what is it, uh, what, what would you advise students who are under that same situation? I would say, since I have a son right now who is at IUP, um, I would say go to go to school. And, and, and the freshman year is always going to be the toughest. You know, it's that fre first freshman semester is just disastrous. You know, I can't tell you how many phone calls and panic attacks and you know all that jazz. So um, go to, to go in and just go and look at everything. Just, there are so many opportunities on campus to see. And your freshman year, you're usually doing your requirements anyway. So go out there and see what there is. You know, if you want to work for the paper, if you want to work for the radio station, if you want to see what the theater department has to offer, or, uh, you know, just wander, you know, on the bulletin boards, there's always stuff to do and to, be, you know, just become aware of. There are things to do, there are organizations to get involved with, and you will find your way. You, if you keep an open mind and you do what you love, do find out what it is that you like doing, things will happen. If you could go back in the past to the day when you're 17, your dad told you that you should maybe major in business, what do you think you would tell that girl? What kind of advice do you think that you would give her, like yourself, that many years ago? Go, go to whatever school, you know, wherever you go to school, Go in there with an open mind, and maybe you have, maybe you do want to be a business major, but maybe you start into the business field, and then you realize, you know, well, I, I really like marketing. Well, maybe marketing will take you back to PR, you know, in the journalism department, you know. But even that way, even I know people who have been business majors and then ended up in public relations, mm -hmm. you know. So there's other ways of getting there, mm -hmm. maybe not through the journalism department, maybe through business or maybe through another department. But everybody, I believe, ends up where they belong. You know, mm -hmm. there's, there's a niche for everybody. And uh, just go to school. If you're undecided going in, you know, Take a broad brush approach to your, your requirements, you know, try to get that stuff locked out, and then just go out and see what there is. Walk around in the different, you know, Eberly and, and Davis and, and whatever. Walk around and see what there is, the art building, the, you know, the music building, and see what there is. And maybe there's an opportunity there that strikes your fancy and will lead you on your way. If you were to give uh, students any type of advice or any kind of quote, what would you tell them? I, I don't know if this answers your question, but this is a quote that I've always uh, thought, and and I'm, now I see it in classrooms on bulletin boards and stuff. Shoot for the moon, and even if you fail, you'll you'll land in the stars. You know, you just. Try to do the absolute best you can, and you may not, you know, hit, you know, your zenith, you know, but you're gonna, you're gonna hit somewhere up there, and it'll, your momentum will just take you, and it's just all about. And you're gonna have bad days, you know. There, there's this Dr. Seuss book, it's, and it's, I forget the name of it, but it's about uh, when you grow up, and it's a great graduation gift. I have it upstairs, and. Uh, at the places you go, you'll go. Oh, the places you'll go, and um, that's a great book. That's a book that every college graduate and high school graduate should read mm -hmm. because sometimes it's going to be scary and sometimes it's going to be dark. But you just got to keep plugging away, and you'll end up in the right place at the right time. 
So we just wrapped up our interview with Kim Glovis. Uh, it was an amazing interview. Personally, her being a journalism major when she attended IUP, I learned a lot of great information from her about how she still stay, stays true to her morals and values. And also hearing that her father wanted her to be a business major, but she still followed her own dreams. That really gives me and the other uh, students a hope to do what we really have a passion for and be successful. So it was an amazing interview and now we're heading to Washington DC to interview with Elaine and Stephanie. So here we come Washington and we're really excited. Ready to get two more interviews tomorrow, bright and early. We're excited to be in Washington DC, our last city. So it's almost over, but we're excited. Yeah. That's how we were uh, able to win uh, an Emmy, and, uh, and for that I'm you know, very honored. So could you tell us about how you were at our age? Seems like it was just yesterday. I loved IUP so much. And I um, came from Maryland. IUP was kind of far away from me. It was um, four and a half hours going into a whole new part of the world from living in basically Washington, D.C. and coming up to a whole no, new part of the world. And I, you know, I loved it. It was a very, very friendly place. And I thought, wow, this is this really big school that I'd never heard of before, basically, before IUP got uh, the kind of attention it has now. When you first came to school, what did you see yourself doing? I think I always had the interest in, in journalism from, from growing up in Washington, from seeing all the events, you know. I think what keeps me going is this love of learning something new, you know, every day. That's what I love about covering the Justice Department. That's what I love about the news business. I mean, maybe I'm, I guess I'd have to say I'm an adrenaline junkie. You know, you there's a, a story is, is, is breaking and it's something, you know, something something brand new. What kind of things did you do at IEP that helped you to get to the point you are today? One of the best things about IEP that I didn't realize at the time when it was, I think probably after my sophomore, probably after my sophomore year was that there was a pro, an internship program and I was able to get an internship at the local NBC station in Washington. And since I you know, live in Washington, my parents live in Washington, it was a really great thing that I could come and work for an entire summer and get the kind of experience I needed, you know, that I could have the internship for the summertime. And I uh, remember, uh, you know, you go in the newsroom and you answer the phones and it was, you know, really exciting. Like, this is a, this is a real newsroom. And I can't believe that I can, I can do this. You know, they want me there every day and it's like having a job. I felt like I'm, I'm in the workforce when I'm, you know, 19 years old. I thought this is really, really exciting to be actually able to do the work while still being a student, and it was a great internship program. So from the IUP internship, then having NBC News on my resume, then I was able to get a job after that at this little teeny startup thing in 1981 called Cable News Network, which was at the time completely brand new. Nobody had ever heard of it, by, but by having the internship from IUP at NBC, I was able to get a job at CNN. Uh, tell us the story uh, behind your uh, winning the Emmy. This was um, in 1996 when um, when someone exploded a, a backpack at the um, Olympic Games in Atlanta and set off, you know, and several people died from that. And CBS, we went on the on the air with our coverage and we stayed on the air. And this was a team Emmy of our um, coverage of the Olympic Park. Bombing. Thinking back on all the years throughout your career, um, how do you feel IEP has helped you be prepared for, for your job? Um, having a broad-based education, I think being in a really friendly part of the world, I think that helped me talk to people too and you realize you're in a, I mean, it's a competitive environment, but being, 
you know, I, I loved going to IUP for the whole part of it. The friends that I made, the, the professors were great, the career counseling, said, oh, we have this internship program. The whole experience, I think getting a very solid, a, a very solid broad-based education really, really prepared me to go out into the world. You know, I, I left, I graduated, I feel like feeling really good about things. I just felt like it was a very well-rounded education. So is there a quote that you live by every day to keep you going uh, to share with students that are entering into their career, or even students coming into college to help them? Yeah, I guess it's just a personal motto of every day getting up in the, you know, you know I, I, I have a, a a poet, an English poet, I kind of a, like poetry as much as I like the news, and she said, you know, about the day, you know, the world is not with us enough, oh, oh taste and see. That go, you know, you wake up in the morning and you say, what, what is out there today that I, I didn't know about yesterday that I want to go out and I want to, I want to find it. That to have that hunger, to, to love what you're doing, that's important if, if you're studying something and you just don't like it. You know, it's not you to, to do something that you really like doing. I, I have to tell you, when I went to IUP, I already knew that I liked journalism. I, liked, I, worked at a, I also worked at a newspaper where I cut the type and put it in the, you know, like I did newspaper. And I knew I liked that. And I, I think just to, to trust your gut instinct, trust your gut. That's, a, that's, another, that's another thing I carry around with me. You know, be true to yourself and, and trust your gut instincts. Stephanie's interview was amazing. She gave us so much information about her career path, starting at a company, CNN, that is now just huge and everyone knows about it. It was just amazing to see how she evolved. And she just gave us so much information about how she has become this great writer, great news uh, reporter, and it just makes you look at life a lot better on how you can accomplish things that you may have thought you never could have. So I think that um, me as well as the other students have a lot of good information to take from this interview. So when you were a music major at IUP, what was your dream? Well, my dreams kind of have shifted over the years. They've changed. My original dream was just to be a piano teacher, and that's all I ever wanted to do. What were you like when you were our age? I uh, started, well, I grew up in a large Greek family, and um, every activity of our family in, involved food and music. Everyone in the family either sang or played a musical instrument. So from a very early age I played an instrument which was the piano and then uh, I knew from then on that I wanted to be a musician and doing something having to do with music. When you went to IUP how did that help with your interest in music? IUP provided a base for everything that I did after that. I have to say that those four years were really important because it uh, taught me discipline, it taught me to focus on a certain thing. It was uh, obviously the start of my music career and, uh, and also having wonderful teachers there. Um, what did your family think about your interest in being a music teacher? Well, they encouraged me to do anything I wanted and um, at one point women weren't allowed, not allowed, that's a strong word, but women weren't encouraged to be the doctor. They were encouraged to be the nurse. Yeah. Uh, or you were a secretary, or you were a teacher. And those were the choices back then. Now, you can be the doctor, you can be the, 
the principal or the superintendent of the school. You can be the president of the company instead of just the secretary to the president. Yeah. So being a music major and having all the music background, how did you become to, become to want to own your own restaurant? Well, I had been teaching piano and then I happened to be giving piano lessons to a prominent uh, person here in Washington and uh, who's also on television and uh, he introduced me to the chef and the chef and I spoke uh, about opening up our own restaurant. He had already had a restaurant and so we talked about having a restaurant together. So that was that restaurant and then we added on three more restaurants. And so, uh, so now we have five here in the States and one over in Italy. It seems like you have two passions, music and the restaurant business. How do you feel like both of those passions have intertwined? It's doing something you love. So whether it's playing the piano and teaching or serving a wonderful meal to somebody, those are two things that, that cause you great joy. And it causes another person great joy if they can uh, listen to your music and, and feel good about it, if they can enjoy a wonderful meal that you've done and feel uh, satisfied, then you feel like you've, you've done your job. When did you feel like you, you reached the point where you actually helped someone uh, through your teaching of music? Well, I think everyone has this urge to be the best that they can be. And I feel that sometimes my best hasn't come yet. Um, I'm working on the curriculum for the university in Italy. I'm working on this score now for this film. And so once those are finished, that won't be the end point for me. I think I'll go on beyond that. And I really see success defined in terms of who you are, who you've reached. Have you done something to make a difference? That's success for me. A person can have five restaurants, they can have 25 restaurants. That doesn't mean success to me. It, if you truly have touched somebody and you've gotten the message across that that person's worthwhile and, uh, and a value, that's success to me. If you could sum up your experiences in, uh, in a few words, like maybe a quote that you live by, what would that be? I think enjoy every day, every moment. and. Just treasure each friendship that you make and don't rush through it and say, okay, oh, I've got one year done, now I only have three more to go. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of four, say, oh, phew, you know, got, got through those four years, now I, can, now I can go on. I think enjoying every moment of it because the people that you meet in college, in those four years, you meet so many influential people. You're meeting teachers, you're meeting other students, you're meeting other people within that industry or that, that profession. So it's wide open it, and for you to just soak it all in and enjoy each minute of it rather than think of it as something to get through to get on to the next part of your life. Have a passion for something that you truly, truly believe in. Work hard and don't be afraid to take risks. Well, it's the end of the trip. The last interview was just done. Elaine was really great. She was one of the most inspirational people I've ever met. Um, she's such a talented person. She's so, she's so smart and, and down to earth. Like she's such a great person. She has such a big heart. And she gives a piece of herself to her students, you know. She doesn't just teach them how to play piano. She gives a piece of herself to them. And she, she has shown us that everything you do, you have to do it with passion. And you have to be driven and motivated. And it's not about, you know, making millions of dollars. And it's not about, you know, doing what your parents want you to do and living out their wishes. It's about doing what drives you and doing it the best of your ability. And that's what this whole trip has been about. And it's taught me so much. I mean, you, th you get to meet these people and meet with their, and get to know them. And it really changes, you know, it, you get caught up in the rat race type of idea and you kind of forget 
what it's all about in the end. And um, I'll never forget Elaine and, and everybody else and what they've taught me. And I'm just so glad to be a part of this whole experience. I'm gonna miss you guys so much, especially when you graduate. And I'll never forget you guys and I'll never forget this experience, but it's not over. It's not over just because the trip's over. It's over when we say it's over. So I'm sad that it's over, the trip's over. I'm sad that our time together's done. Uh, I'm actually kind of glad that it's, that it's finished and you know, we're, we, we did it. And we, you know, we really did it. The thing about your path and your passion, I think those are like the two main words that stuck out to me throughout this whole trip mm -hmm. because after graduation, it seems like sometimes you're afraid to take that next step. Yeah. Like you feel like, oh, I love law. Oh, I love Spanish. Mm -hmm. I love fashion. I love writing. But it's like, okay, where do I go with this? So having that security, hearing from like six alumni that they followed exactly what they wanted to do and they still turned out okay and love mm -hmm. what they do. So mm -hmm. I think just us taking away from this to do what we want to do, like don't be afraid to knock on a door, tap on a window like yeah, Bruce said, yeah. and we'll make it. They all still have very positive you yeah. know, things about IEP and how it really helped them in their career and later in other things in life as well. It just mm -hmm. makes me feel confident that the skills oh, that yeah. I've learned at IEP and my education has really, you know, that I'll be able to yeah, I feel prepared now. Yeah. Just yeah. knowing that these these six people went to the Very school that we attended. Yeah. Like these people, they were sitting in this room. Like they know they 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 were in Sutton Hall. They went to the same dining hall. Like yeah, so we just we have the same yeah. starting point. And what they did differently than some of the other people is like they took their opportunity and they they just grabbed it and they attacked it. And they opened doors for themselves. And it's like and that really encourages me, like, you know, to just go out there. And if I want to meet somebody, if I need to talk to somebody, even if it's somebody, like, that's not in my career path, especially, everyone's got something to say. I feel like all of these are connected. Mm -hmm. Like, Leland starting off with, like, going global and really stepping out there, like, not staying in a box of which you're comfortable with. And then everyone following him, telling you to go down that path that you may be afraid of. It's just like everything is linked together, and it just gives you so much courage to do that. When people come to college, sometimes they put what they really love on the back burner because it's like, oh, you're not going to make that much money in this mm -hmm. field, or... I haven't heard too much success in this area. Yeah. And now I feel like no matter what, all of these people are still happy. Success has such a bad correlation with the, with the word success with money. Do what you love. You do what you're passionate about and you do it with your whole self, your whole heart and your whole mind. Then you are true you know, and, and to yourself and to everyone and you're successful. You never know, you know, where it's, the road's gonna take you, so to speak, and you just, you gotta be, you, you know, you don't always need directions. So just go for it, you know, just take, just go and see where it leads you. And, you know, maybe one day you'll have students knocking on your door, you know, asking about your life. Expand your every horizon. IEP is your base. Leland Hardy. Go to grad school. It's fun. Bruce Graham. Your road is wide open. Go for it. Stephanie Lamadakis. Don't be afraid to take risks. Matt Edmondson. Follow your passion. Elaine Sheets. Find your door, then open it. Kim Globus. Success is the journey, not the destination. Tear down your walls. Your passion will lead you to the path. You just have to follow it.